right. Nice to sitting down. Good morning. I want to thank you for joining the Alaska House Majority Coalition, our press availability. I'm Representative Chris Tuck, Majority Leader of our coalition. I'm joined today by Representative Les Guerra out of uh, Anchorage. He's our Vice Chair of House uh, Finance Committee, serving District 20. Also from Finance Committee, Committee uh, Representative Dan Ortiz from Ketchikan, representing District 36. And then also with us, uh, chairing our uh, House Energy Committee, Representative Adam Wool, um, representing District 5 in Fairbanks. I'm proud to be the majority leader of this coalition. We came together for protecting our economy and protecting Alaskan jobs, uh, making sure that uh, hardworking Alaskans uh, and their families have a solid future. We're looking for a sustainable fiscal plan, a comprehensive one, one that Alaska would be proud of when we're done with our work. And so we're taking charge, we're taking action. We have a lot of uh, bills uh, on the table right now as far as options for fis uh, fixing our fiscal plan. This week, we have budget subcommittee closeouts. Uh, it looks like it's working having the uh, budget subcommittees combined with our policy committees because we are coming up with fantastic ideas on policies that need to be changed to help uh, with our fiscal situation. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Representative Les Guerra. Thank you, Representative Tuck. I'd like to talk to about something a little bit new today. You've heard sort of budget, 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 and you've heard legislative speak. We're in a recession. There are some in the Senate that have a plan that would put us in a 10-year recession, one that will kill 10 to 15,000 private and public sector jobs that we will not get back for 10 years. Uh, according to the university, at this point, after $3 billion of budget cuts already, at this point, every $100 million more in cuts is going to cost 1,000 to 1,500 private sector and public sector jobs. A billion dollars in cuts, just as some in the Senate have pushed, will cause another 15,000 job losses on top of the 9,000 we just lost last year. Do you want a state that people move from, or do you want a state where people want to live? That's the question this year. If you're just going to cut a billion dollars and, and sort of play to the soundbite game, you're going to cause a 10-year recession. Just admit that to your constituents. That's what you're doing. Right now, um, I'm proud to be part of a caucus that says we need a plan that is fair to everybody. We cannot pretend you can cut another billion dollars out of a budget that's been cut by $3 billion already. That's the lowest in real dollars per capita that it's been in 35 years. And uh, you've heard this myth that the operating budget hasn't been cut. Uh, it's been cut by over a half a billion dollars since 2013. That's budgets for people with disabilities, uh, our public schools, our university. And at some point, you can't just keep cutting public education and cutting the future out of this state. So our plan is to get out of this recession as fast as possible. Some in this building are talking about a plan that'll put us into a recession for about half of the next generation. We need to do better than that. Uh, we need to get a fair share for our oil. We need to have a balanced fiscal plan uh, that uh, says, look, part is looking for rational cuts, cuts to waste, and then part is raising revenue. I mean, let's just be honest with people and stop fibbing to them. Thank you. Representative Ortiz. Thank you, Chris, and good morning, everyone. I'm very thankful uh, to the voters and constituents of District 36 for giving me the continued opportunity to serve as their representative in the Alaska State House. We're nearing the midway point in what for me is my third session. And I, along with my fellow legislators, happen to be uh, serving in some very difficult and challenging times. The most significant challenge we face uh, right now in the state uh, revolves around our fiscal situation. The $2.7 billion deficit that faces our state requires legislators who are willing to make tough choices uh, that include significant opportunity costs. Nevertheless, we must collectively make those choices in a way that reflects uh, what is in the best interest of all Alaskan residents who reside throughout our very diverse state. I am proud to be a member of the newly formed nonpartisan House majority that has coalesced around the idea uh, that we need to come up with a fiscal plan that addresses our long-term fiscal situation. In that spirit, in the House Finance Committee, we've put forward House Bill 115, which is a four-pillared plan that does that very thing. 
Number one, it protects and maintains the permanent fund for a continued sustainable PFD. That's a requirement for me for any fiscal plan that I get behind is a plan that ensures that PFD well into the future. It restructures how we use the permanent fund earnings reserve, allowing for uh, some of those earnings to fund government services, and it significantly closes the fiscal gap that we face. It also institutes a broad-based tax that creates, a revenue, to, creates revenue to further uh, reduce the fiscal gap. And the fourth part of that plan is that we will continue to find smart surgical cuts to the state's operating budget, and through House Bill 111, uh, we will address the unsustainable oil credit uh, obligations that have mounted under previously passed legislation. You know, one of the things that we always need to remember is that we have, in my two years of service, done a great deal to reduce uh, the costs in our operating budget. And that was important, and we needed to do that. However, I think in some cases we've gone a bit too far, and it's caused a collective hurt to our overall economy. Let me give you a specific example. I serve on the House Subfinance Committee for Fish and Game. The Fish and Game's budget has been reduced by around 35 percent in terms of, uh, in, in terms of the, of the <laughs> I'm sorry, in, turn, uh, in, in terms of the overall budget amount of dollars that goes to Fish and Game. And what that has done has caused, we've seen an increase uh, in foregone fish opportunities, uh, fish catch opportunities for our fishermen. Uh, for our commercial fishermen. They're beginning to lose opportunities to catch fish. This is revenue that would go to their families to help provide for their needs, and it would also go to uh, increased uh, fish taxes to the state of Alaska. So what I'm saying is we've cut the budget in fish and game to the point where it's bringing overall negative effects to the economy and even to the state's uh, inflow of, uh, of dollars. Another area where I think we've gone a little bit too far is in the area of education uh, cuts. For example, um, we have reduced uh, funding for preschool education, and that, those reductions have meant, in, in, in real terms, uh, lost opportunities for our young children who are preparing to try to enter into kindergarten and start their careers uh, or start their education uh, you know, years and, 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 they're, and they're given less tools to do so in the process. And so what that can cause is increased costs, remedial education costs uh, for those, some of those children, um, and increased costs in the end to the state of Alaska. So while continued cuts need to be looked for, we need to be smart. We need to be thinking about what the long-term impact of those cuts are um, and make sure that we're actually uh, doing what's in the best interest of all of our residents and also what's in the best interest of the state of Alaska in terms of uh, creating a, a sustainable workforce, uh, an educated workforce, et cetera. And with that, I'll close. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Representative Wool. Thank you, uh, Representative Tuck. I'm, I'm cleared my throat. I'm ready. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you, everyone, and thank you guys. And uh, I go back home every now and again and, and see my family and, and people in Fairbanks and they say what's it like down there how's it going and I say it's really busy we're really busy this year um, for one I am now in the majority as, 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 lo as <laughs> along with these guys next to me but um, it's a new experience and it's a lot more responsibility and it's a lot more work um, and it's I'm really enjoying it there's a lot of new faces in the building and uh, it's great to see new people and new energy and working together with these new people and uh, it's it's going really well I'm fortunate enough to chair uh, Energy Committee, uh, co-chair tr uh, Transportation, and Vice Chair Labor and Commerce, plus also serve on State Affairs. So there's definitely a lot of, a lot of bills we're looking at, and we're moving a lot through. We're looking at all kinds of bills, not just from any one group, but anyone who has a good-looking bill will look at it. Um, but again, we're working with a lot of new people here, and I'm really excited about the new energy in the building. Um, on the Energy Committee that I chair, we uh, recently passed the PACE bill. And PACE, for those who don't know, stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy. And it's a bill that allows uh, commercial buildings to get loans for uh, energy efficiency or for clean energy uh, transferring over to a cleaner fuel as in natural gas, which is much needed in Fairbanks. And we're still moving ahead with that project. 
Uh, transportation, we're looking at the HB60, which is a motor fuel tax bill, which is a, um, a revenue bill we're looking at for motor fuel, uh, aviation fuel, and marine fuel. And it's look to ra looking to raise about $40 million in the first year and uh, possibly another 40 in the next years. So these are good revenue bills, something we've looked at for a long time. Alaska right now has the lowest motor fuel tax rate in the country. So it's something uh, that's needed to be looked at. Um, <clears throat> but also, overall, this uh, looking at all this, we have to look at the budget and our situation right now. And we can't, um, we can look at little revenue pieces, and that's important, but we have to look at the big picture. We have to look at the permanent fund. We have to look at revenue sources. We have to look at some responsible cuts. And these are all part of a, of a big uh, plan. So with that in mind, um, we, we, uh, we can't avoid looking at the, the difficult choices, and that's what we're down here for. We're not down here just to uh, pass small bills. We have to pass the big important bills that are important for the state. The state right now, I feel, is at a precipice. We're at a very uh, dangerous place. We, we have a, we're in a recession. We're having a lot of job loss. We need to turn the tide. We need to stop the job loss. We need to bring confidence back to the state of Alaska. And we need to um, infuse energy and, and get people coming back here and get a good workforce. We need to have a good trained workforce which uh, starts also with the university. We need to keep the university strong and robust. We have to have research. We have to have um, educated people in the workforce. Not necessarily a bachelor degree but any kind of post um, K through 12 education is going to be very important in the future and we need to keep moving on that. So. Um, I'm, you know, concerned about the state. I'm a small business owner. A lot of my colleagues in Fairbanks are small business owners, and we talk a lot, and I talk to distributors, and we're at an important point, and we have to get over this and, and move ahead and, and shore up our situation and get people um, confident in Alaska and uh, confident in our future. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Wool. Uh, questions, and please uh, state your name and affiliation. Becky Bohr at the Associated Press for Representative Tuck. Um, the Senate last year passed a version of a permanent fund restructuring. Is there an expectation that the House needs to act first and send over its own permanent fund restructuring, something like HB 115, or politically is that risky because you have said in the past that we should touch the permanent fund last after we do? oil taxes and all. So uh, yes, we uh, were looking at a fiscal plan path last year. We wanted to make sure that we're going to minimize the permanent fund dividend uh, impacts on working families as much as possible. <coughs> uh, so we have a lot of moving parts right now. We're not, uh, uh, so we got uh, House Bill 111 that's uh, being heard right now in uh, resources all this week. We got House Bill 115 that's going to be starting up again today, I believe. Uh, so uh, we are coming up with a comprehensive plan, and we don't have any expectations on uh, what the Senate has for us. All we're going to do is we're going to do our part, and we plan on having um, a budget bill over to them uh, very soon, and then revenue measures coming shortly after that. What would your expectations be once, once something like HB 15 is ready and financed to send that out to the floor and send it over rather than waiting for sort of a, a, an end game piece with that? Uh, I, right now, we're, it, it's hard to time these bills out because there's so much to them. Um, we're going to be definitely, um, after we had public hearings last Friday, things are going to shape up a little bit different. We don't know what it's going to look like in the end, but we are listening to the public. Uh, we do have some really good input and some changes are going to take place. We're letting the finance uh, committee um, take that pace on that. And meanwhile, at the same time, simultaneously, we have the oil tax bill doing, going through the same procedures. 